Hello there, everybody, and welcome to this feature presentation on YouTube. I am King Mac, your hamburger pal. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to enjoy a hot, fresh cheeseburger along with some delicious golden french fries, a tasty milkshake, and a nice soft drink. Also, be sure to grab some hot buttery popcorn while you're at it as you enjoy this episode of TT Burger Game Reviews on YouTube. Welcome back, my friends. You are watching TT Bird Game Reviews here on YouTube. I am your host, Tony, and we're back with more Naughty Dog action in this episode of episode 257 as we take a look at more of the Jack and Daxter franchise with episode 257, four parts here, and we're on part two of four parts here. 3D platformer with no load time, similar to Naughty Dog's Crush Bandicoot, and more and stuff. And before I get started, I want to give a shout out to everyone who supported this channel, mainly Friggin HD, Subdo MX King Max, Lost of Death Hyper Lamia, Purple Stateside, Megs, Black Healer, Griffin Puff, Homie RJ, Ugly Joe, Rockstar Pool 69, V Rock Games, the, sen the sen Sensational Gent, and more and more and more and more and more. And we have a lot to talk about here for this episode of TT Bird Game Review, episode 27, part 2 of 4 parts with more precursor action, Jack action, Daxter action, Samos and Kira, and all of them and more. Before we can even, even, even dive into this, to this part here with a sequel here and stuff, we need to go back to episode 257, part 1 of 4 for an exclusive Precursor Jack and Daxter TT Bird Recap Trail on what you missed. I took a look at Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy for the PlayStation 2 gave it an 8.5 out of 10 because it was a fantastic game and it's definitely worth only for people who are, who are fan of Naughty Dog, Crash Bandicoot, and platforming games like that. And the game that had, had, had it was a massive world with no load times whatsoever and stuff like that. But there were some problems with the graphics and the gameplay had not aged the best and trying to find to try to 100% the game could be very tricky and everything like that. But it's a game that should that's definitely worth checking out and putting your PlayStation 2 collection and stuff if you want some platform action with the PlayStation 2 and stuff as well. And if you want it on the PlayStation 3 PlayStation 4, it's on there as well. The PlayStation, PlayStation 3 Jack and Extra HD collection and it's on digital as well for PS and PlayStation 4 as well. But now we're gonna we're gonna zoom ahead to the year 2003, October 14, 2003. A week, exactly a week before my 15th birthday, I was a freshman in high school and everything like that. And we got, and in turn, we got a sequel here called Jack 2. Sorry, Daxter isn't in the title, but he's still in the game. Jack 2 for the PlayStation 2, with October 14th, 2003. Let's get started here, shall we? Jack 2 is an excellent game. Excellent sequel as well, with Daxter in it as well. Jack, Jack 2 improved with most of the issues from Jack and Dexter's of Precursor Legacy and, and adds a darker and deeper theme to the game and story and the fact that Jack can talk this time as well and a more overall environment similar to the Grand Theft Auto games with vehicles to pilot, a hoverboard for Jack along with, with weapons to use and new dark eco powers for Jack and more makes this an improved sequel that is worthy of owning in your PlayStation 2 collection. Especially if you're a fan of the original Jack and Dexter's of Precursor Legacy and Crash Bandicoot and Naughty Dog themselves, you have to check this game out. It is worth it, but it is not perfect. There are still some holdover problems that they did not improve on, but for most of my part, they fixed a lot, a lot of the issues with the first game. And is it worth the hype and everything? Yes, yes it is. One new thing is Jack 2 is darker than last time with a more serious shift in tone and story. And Jack has a voice and talks a lot more and has new dark eagle powers that, that make him fucking burgling badass and strong along with sections that both Jack and Dexter have separate gameplay. Adding more to the fun factor and vehicles you can drive that give Jack 2 a grand thought feel to it and more. So how do we start here? Well let's recap what happened at the end of the first game as we explain the story. Jack 2 takes place after the true ending of Jack and Dexter, the Precursor Legacy, where Goy and Maya, who were supposed to help Daxter, who ended up being possessed with Dark Eco, were defeated. And they learned that they could not bring Daxter back to his normal self, but he's okay with it. He enjoys it and stuff. The duo then, then, then joins Samos the Green Sage and his daughter Kira. They are testing a mechanical device called the Rift Rider that is linked to an ancient portal called the Rift Gate. Jack activates the machine and the rift gate opens and allows a strange looking creature to flood the world and our heroes along with Samus and Kira are sucked into a land called Haven City that is in trouble being ruled by a ruler of power named Baron Praxis 
and his right hand man Errol who are in cahoots with these people called the Metalhead who are trying to take over the world with Dark Eco and making the citizens miserable. Jack and Dexter get separated and Dexter is searching Haven City for two years looking for Jack and finds them being experimented on with Dark Eco with Baron Praxis as the, 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 the test subject to create a new soldier. Dexter finds Jack and tells him to say something because he's been looking all over him for two years and Jack speaks I'm gonna kill Praxis! And Dexter's like, whoa, somebody, somebody need, need to calm you down there. It's me, Dexter. And he is mad as hell with Dark Eagle powers. They then meet an old man named Kor with, with a little boy who does not speak and tells him of the shadow. And they learn as time goes on that they're in the future and Haven City is their world. And they must find Samus and Kira, cure Jack with Dark Eagle powers and put an end to the Metalheads and Baron Praxis plan to take over the Haven City and more as... Brian Prices takes the precursor stone and everything like that he's stolen that as well. And along the way we meet we meet some characters like um like like Torn who is this soldier who and you, you meet the, the, this big blob named named Crew who is pretty much this this blob who tells who sends you on errands and stuff like that. Sig is this warrior like like knight who who's who's maybe who's voiced by Phil Lamar, he's like a badass version of Vamp from Metal Gear Solid 2, so liberty hint hint, they both voice the, the, the they're both voiced by by the same character. And pra and Praxton, who is who, who is who is the who is Baron Praxton's daughter, who joins the good side and stuff and everything. And then you have this character Vin, this wimpy scientist who's scared and everything. He gets scared, stiff and everything. And then uh, along, along the way, we meet a young Samos, and we meet up with with Kira and and old Samos and stuff. And you meet this character named named Tess, who is Daxter's love interest. And you know, <laughs> it, it's but it, it, it's funny how. The, the human falls in love with an odd soul and stuff, but it but Jack well Dexter was a human in the beginning, so yeah. All this is this jam into a jam packed pet pack pack story, learning about the secret precursors and the ruins behind him and history and more. The story is awesome. I really like it, especially because Jack talks this time and adds more to the story. But there is a complaint I have within that some of the good characters are unlikable and distrusting at first. They distrust Jack and Dexter at first and are rude and arrogant. Perfect example is the character Torn, who is this gruff like angry soldier guy who barks orders at the duo and is rude to them, but he gains a heart. And Crew is this lazy blob who just who just who just doesn't really have a heart there and stuff and, and everything like that. And then there's there, 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 there's there's Vin who's so annoying and whiny and a fraidy cat and stuff. He he's not he's not rude and unlikable, but he's annoying. And Jack is not being likable at first as well in the process, but you know, characters build up in story and everything like that. I mean, same old small as most was kind of unlikable in Jack and Death because of Legacy, but he gained a heart, the heart at the end of that game, so it's about character development. The presentation of Jack 2, excellent graphics, and their improved look better than last time. The character models are more detailed than last time and they better, and they don't look as blurry as they did in the first game, because like, they didn't age the best start they're experimenting with the graphics engine. And Jack and Daxter especially they look looking and better with more polygons and textures and they look awesome. The environments are huge. You're in Haven City and the city is in despair. A lot of detail with the lighting and the weather effects but with rain and clouds and dead night transitions too like last time. But you know the, it looks cooler here. And also once again no load times. And this game is huge with no load times which was, was rare for the time in 2003, 2004. And no frame rate issues either. The in-game cutscenes also look nice, and they added a subtitle option too. And they are perfectly cleaned up, you can toggle the subtitles on after and cutting scenes to press the square button, or just go to the options menu. And once again, a widescreen setting and a progressive scan option, but you have to manually turn the widescreen option on every time you start the game, which is annoying. The graphics look epic and amazing, definitely for sure. But I have complaints there are some graphic glitches in some of the cutscenes, like, there will, there will, there will be like, um, a piece, a piece of the bottom of, of Jack's chin, just like, be, look like a piece of string, like, like, like coming, coming out of his chin, and it moves around in certain cutscenes there too, like horizontal line, like his skin is coming off, and it, and it looks weird. Like there are some graphic, graphical, graphical glitches there. Sometimes there'll be some sticky issues too, but it was a big of this kind of expected. Jack 2's sound is amazing, better than last time. The voice setting is top notch. Most of the actors, and not all the actors, return from the first game to reprise their roles and do an excellent job, such as Max, Max Casella, who voices Daxter, along with the late Warren Burton, who voices the same most, both the both, uh, young and old Samos, and Anna Garduno as Kira, and this time we have new actors who do an excellent job as well, such as Clancy Brown, voicing Baron Practice, you know, Mr. Krabs with SpongeBob and stuff, and he was also, also the principal in Rugrats All Grown Up, and 
Neil Cortex and Uka Uka as well, so that was cool that they added him for this as well. And Chris Cox, who who, who voiced Voice Intelligence in certain in some Star Wars games and stuff, and he also he also did the talk lines with Snoopy and Snoopy the Musical, the anime the anime made TV version. He voices Pecker, this bird who was a translator for the old lady always like, Ah, do you want me to peck you with my pig? Ah, do you want me to peck you? Oh, that's dead with Tarzan Lot! We had to miss lunch because of you! And we got Phil Lamar, known for known for, for, for Vamp, voices the Mighty Warrior Sig, and, and the best voice acting role goes to Michael Irwin for his role for Jack. He steals the show and fits Jack perfectly, better than anyone else. He's like, I'm gonna kill Praxis. We're not doing any more DC, tell us why the, why the metalheads are in cahoots with the city and everything. It was nice to see some well-known actors, especially Clancy Brown, see was also Neil Cortez and Uka Uka in the Naughty Dog Crash Bandicoot games here, and that's pretty awesome there. The music has a different feel to it. It may not feel like Crash Bandicoot music, but it does not need to feel that way. The music has a deeper tone and darker tone to let you know that the city's in peril and more. The other sound effects such as your weapons and jumping and stuff is all there. But I do have to admit some problems with the sound. First, when you die, there are no lines from Dr. Kyrie saying, Say goodnight, yeah! Step one, don't do that again. Secondly, Get out of the again, I'm gonna that now! And I guess because Jack speaks, now they didn't need that stuff, but they were awesome, but it sucks not to see them here. And also when 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 Jack jumps and doesn't attack, he doesn't make any sound anymore, but I guess if he talks not probably why. And Daxter is sometimes why he's funny and come off a bit whiny and scaredy cat. And sometimes the voice setting can be can be a little over top and hand up again and stuff and everything, but you know, it's not bad. Jack 2's gameplay was a huge success and improvement for sure. For stars, it's just like the original game, with the platform elements and action elements, with jumping, taking down the enemies and collecting items and more. This time in Jack 2, you're given objectives to beat each mission given to you by key NPCs you can go to in the many order you want, and it adds to the feel of an open world game like in Grand Theft Auto. You also have vehicles like these flying vehicles with like cars, motorcycles, dual engine flyers, and the metal head head ones that have the head, which, which are like band practice ones where you have turrets on them and stuff like that, and you can use your, your guns here. And Jack also gets a hoverboard later on, which will come in handy to like to like, to, like grind on rails and stuff, like kind of like sort of like snowboarding and Tony Hawk games and stuff, and skateboarding. And for time missions, they will definitely come in handy too. For some reason, it's badass. I don't know why though. I just find it badass. Jack also has dark eco powers you can earn by by bringing the precursor statue, a number of skull gems. These are optional, but they're worth it. You have racing missions too, and rail shooter missions, escort protection missions, and more and more. Jack 2 was a bit long last time, about 10 hours long to 100%, and there are tons of side missions and cool ass secrets here, more to keep you around and entertain. I had fun with Jack 2, more so than last time with the, than I did with the first game, that was awesome too, but we have some precursor negatives. First, the game is really, really hard to where you will rage quit and scream. Some of these missions are overly difficult where, where, where you'll just, 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 just like rage quit and scream and shut the console off, or just keep failing over and over. Perfect example is there's this mission where you're trying to take out all the bad guys, guys near near the huts and everything, to 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 to, to get back to Haven City and stuff like that and stuff. Af after you get the seal, get to get a part of the seal of Mar. Praxis men keep spawning from dropships with melons, stuff that they keep just spawning from dropships nonstop and keep coming out in swarms. And you'll have you'll you'll be shooting one 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 wave of them, then there's another wave over there. You have to keep running back and forth to forth, and even when you progress, they keep coming back more and more. And they, and they will not stop. And if, and if you try to avoid them in the water, you'll just get you'll just get get zapped in the water and die. And they'll keep coming out and swarming there, and they'll kill you if you're not careful. And there are no health health pops in this mission either for the most part. And, and there are not many weapons to use, like there are only like three or so. The vehicles are weak. You only take a few hits before blowing up. Sometimes only one hit will destroy. It. And sometimes parts you play as Dash himself with like platforming and stuff are annoying due to the camera and more. And there are racing missions too, which can which which like. The racing missions are, are not polished the best and stuff. Jack can be unlikable in, in the beginning, but there's also, this is one of the main complaints I have here, Jack 2 has a lot of bugs and glitches that will break, freeze the game, where you'll die, you'll have to reset the game, and there's also a bug in a later mission that can corrupt your save data and prevent you from beating the game. If this happens, you have to start all over again, which really sucks. And the hoverboarding is cool, but you can't use your weapons on it. If you if you hit one of Praxis' guards and vehicle on foot, they'll all come after you in swarms like a monkey on a pogo stick is chasing after you. The character Vin is the, the scientist and stuff like who's to he help is very very annoying. He's the worst that gets on your nerves. And the friendly AI, AI can be dumb and tight and get you killed and stuff and everything like that. And if you accidentally hit the, hit a friendly AI by mistake. 
they can hit you and take and, and take and take two pieces of your health. And ammo can be scarce at times with some of your weapons as well. And every time you boot the game up, you have to turn the white you setting on each time manually. Same with like the subtitles as well. If you don't hit the square button right, right as soon as you see like the opening and stuff. But that's all the complaints I have for it though. Final thoughts: If you enjoyed the first Jack and Daxter Percy Legacy, you'll you'll enjoy Jack Two because it's definitely worth it in the end. Jack 2 gets a 9 out of 10 because of the problems I have with it. A lot of people consider the, 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 this, this the best game in the Jack franchise, but you'll find out, 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 out which one's the best in the end, in my opinion, and stuff. And that's it for episode 257, part 2 of 4. Stay tuned, we're gonna round up the, the Jack trilogy, part 3 of 4 here. Yeah, there's gonna be another game after that, we'll take a look at Jack 3. That wraps us up, up everything like, like a trilogy is supposed to. How does this game fare? You have to find out next. It takes play place in the desert at first. And we have and we, and we have some returning characters, we have some secrets and mysteries that you uncover and everything. And there's there's some there's some some questions that are answered in this game. So you'll find out in the next part. Which all I gotta say is Tony, peace now, have a day, see all my review of Jack 3 on the PlayStation 2. Take care everybody.